my name is Joanna and I do research with ultraviolet radiation or UV radiation and in this video I'd like to talk to you about uh, an activity that I take to schools and talk to people about just so that they understand about ultraviolet radiation and also the importance of sunscreen and how we apply it. So I'd like to start talking to you about the activity but why don't I move the camera first so we can actually see what you need and what you're going to have to do to do the activity successfully. So let's get started. Okay, to do this activity, we're going to need a few things. So first up, we're going to need our sun print kit. So I've already explained this in another video, so you're welcome to go and check that out and find out where you can get some from. So that's the first key item. The second thing we're going to need is some plastic transparency sheets. So you can see that these are the ones you would use in a full cap binder and you'll need one of these for every person who is going to be doing the activity. Um, with this paper you can, it's quite big, it's, you can see it's about the size of an A4 sheet of paper. Um, you can actually cut up into about six sheets of 10 by 10 so you can get out of 15 sheets um, times six, do the math yourself, my brain's not working right now, you can get quite a few. So that's what you need. And so your piece of paper will look like that. And for the first part, we also will need a black Nico pen. Now, this is a fine one. I do recommend getting the thick nibs, especially if you're using this with younger students because you get more coverage that way. The other thing I do not recommend is using whiteboard markers. They do not work. We found out that the hard way with some poor students who didn't get very good results. So black permanent marker. So that's the first part of the activity. So for the second part of the activity, we're going to need some sunscreen. And for any student who shouldn't be handling sunscreen, say perhaps they've got some allergies, you might want paper plates or reusable plates that you can wash and some cotton tips. So that will help us handle it. So that's what we need. If you want to do this alongside me and you've got some of this gear, please do. Otherwise, just watch to the end and you can try this out yourself at home. So in the first part, we really only need your pen, your paper and your plastic sheet. I do recommend at the beginning of the activity, in fact, probably before you start, put the places of paper in the plastic sheet protectors to start with um, and push it right down the bottom because the movement of the paper inside could be a problem. So you can see it's not pushed right down the bottom. And when I say a problem, it's not always a problem. It can be useful for a conversational piece. So that piece is now ready to be used. And all you need to do is tell your students that you want them to draw a picture. So draw a picture on the plastic over where the blue is. Don't, like some students will get sort of a little bit confused and think that they need to draw over this side. This won't work. And the other thing is don't let them take the paper outside of the plastic and draw direct. Don't let them draw on the paper directly because that will stop the paper from actually working. So we can't actually put things on the paper itself. So we need to do it over the top. All right. So I'm not going to draw this picture because I've got one we made earlier. And this was done by a student. You can see I've folded it over here. Um, it was used by a previous activity. And the things I recommend is looking, getting students to do shapes. Now, younger children have no problem drawing. When you tell them to draw, they have every confidence that they can draw. If you have a group that are a little bit older and sometimes have learnt that they believe that if they don't draw well, they can't draw at all. So just suggest things like shapes. Um, in this case, simple things like leaves, flowers, um, patterns, dots, stripes, color in some sections, make thin sections like little dots here and thick dots here. You can see a thicker Nico will do this quite quickly. So you should be able to get someone to draw something within a few minutes. Um, the younger children love drawing, so give them a little bit of time if you can, about five minutes or so. And you can see that the little pens, 
um, only give you very fine detail. Now, fine detail is not always the thing that you want in these. Um, you want nice clear lines. So I'm not going to add any more to that because that's, that's good to go. So the next part of the activity is to take this outside and expose it. So if you want, um, the best thing to do is just take the students directly outside, get them to hold it out in the sun. We're going to go expose this in a minute. And especially on a windy day, make sure they hold it. Now it's a bit windy today when I do this, so I'll need to weight this down. All right, so why don't we go and expose our piece of paper? So you can see this is a piece of paper we had outside and it's actually moved inside and we can actually start to see the pattern. So when you've done your exposure and brought the students back inside, you can tell them they can take their piece of paper out and look at it really carefully. So we can see that the dark blue is where the permanent marker was and has prevented UV from getting to the paper and putting them side by side that the light blue, as we saw when we were exposing it, which is basically a reaction of UV with the chemical, um, that we had some sort of reaction. Now this is not the end point. We have to fix our picture. Um, and so this is the idea of the original, a bit like photography, where we have to fix the picture to the paper because what we have here is the dark blue's unreacted chemicals. Now if we don't do something with that, it will, con it will eventually react by itself. UV just makes it react much more quickly. So we need to wash our paper, hence why we need the trays of water. So, so you can have these set up prior. All you need is the sink or a tray. Um, have some trays of water ready to go when you're doing this in the class. It'll save you time. You don't need to have a lot of water. You only need about an inch or so. And it's really important to ask the students to keep an eye on this section as well. Every part that they do is useful. So we grab our paper and we literally pop it in the water. Tell them to keep it face up, push it under the water. And so we're just going to leave it in there for about a minute. And I'm just going to video this so you can sort of see what happens. You don't really need to agitate it. I'm just sort of doing that to keep this to focus. And as you're watching it, you will see something happen. The latest batches of paper don't seem to do it as quickly as some of the old ones. Okay, it's just starting to happen now. It's not really obvious, but what's happening is where the dark blue is, you don't need to touch the paper to get this, but the dark blue is essentially, that's the unreacted chemicals and it's starting to rinse out. So we don't need to leave this here for too much longer. I'd say that's nearly done. So like I said, it only takes about a minute. 
And students at this point will probably become upset. <laughs> they uh, will say, where's, where's my picture? So there's a little bit left to go. So the other thing I forgot to mention that you will need is some paper towel. And that's so you can dry your paper. So give each student a couple of sheets of paper, preferably absorbent if you can get it. And just pat it down. Um, younger students will really want to pat it down, so just tell them to be gentle because it's wet paper. And you can see, you can't see a lot right now, but we're going to let this we're going to let this sit and we're going to let it dry now because the drying process is also very important. So I'm just going to put that to the side. <laughs>